All right, so let's talk about the terminology of curve sketching you know, re with reference to calculus. So I've made another video about the basis of curve sketching using calculus, uh, the steps one goes about to sketch the curve of or sketch the graph of a function using calculus and uh, what this is useful for. So that's a good idea. I think it would be a good idea to check that out first if you're unfamiliar with the uh, uh, methodology or purpose of curve sketching. Uh, and if you don't need that review or um, you just want to jump into the terminology, then let's go ahead and get started here with this video on the terminology of, uh, of curve sketching. So, all right, when you are asked to sketch a curve, you're going to need to know a couple of things. You're going to need to know the zeros. And I think we need to say for all of these, it's going to be if they exist. Because you may not have zeros, you may not have some of these other things here. You're going to need to know the y-intercept, if it exists, of course. You're going to need to know critical values. You're going to need to know uh, concavity of the function. You're going to need to know inflection points. And you're going to need to know intervals of increase or decrease. So these are pretty much the basic things you're going to need to know. Um, and oh yeah, of course, um, also you will need to know, and this is you know, also crazy important, you will need to know uh, horizontal asymptotes and vertical asymptotes. All right, now I will devote a page to each of these. So let's, let's look at uh, zeros first. So, zeros. All right. You do not need any basis in calculus to understand the zeros of a function. Let's go ahead and uh, draw a basic graph here. The zeros of a function are just any time that that, now that's not a function, is it? Any time that that function touches the x axis is a zero. So, we have a zero here, we have a zero here. There are two zeros of that function. Zeros are also critical points. They're critical points of f of x. Uh, critical points we'll be talking about later, but uh, you, you just need to go ahead and understand that these are critical points of f of x itself, and that will make more sense in a minute. All right, so what do we talk about next? We talked about y-intercepts. So y-intercepts. have another function here. A y-intercept is just going to be anywhere that a function touches the y-axis. So once again, these, these first few things are extremely straightforward. So here is our one and only y-intercept for this function. Now, I say one and only y-intercept. Could there be more than one y-intercept? Well, no, there can't be because it's not a function if there is. Because, uh, because functions have to pass the vertical line test in order to be a function. So just a quick little aside here on the vertical line test. Let's say we have a function, or let's say we have something we don't know if it's a function. All right, is this a function? Well, is there anywhere, the question we need to ask on this graph, that we can draw a line vertically that will pass through more than one point on the graph? And the answer, of course, is no, we can't. So yeah, this is a function. That's, that's good. But what about, uh, let's clear this, what about this function right here? What about this? Is this a function? Well, let's apply the same vertical line test. Okay, looks okay. Seems to be passing it, but then, ah, we hit it right here, and look, one, two, three, we explode through this function three times. This is not okay. So uh, this is not a function. So we can never have more than one y-intercept for that very reason, because functions must pass the vertical line test. So y-intercepts, we've taken care of that. We've taken care of zeros. All right, now what do we need to look at? We need to look at critical values. All right, so critical points.
Critical points are just when something equals zero. So you can, uh, you're, you may have a assignment in calculus class, and it will say find the critical points for uh, for f of x, f prime of x, f double prime, and f triple prime, or you know something like that. If your professor is especially sadistic, you know, like find the critical points up to the fifth derivative or something horrible like that. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, look at this f of, not f prime, f of x equals 0. These are going to be critical points. So let's look back here, what I, what I said on this. f of x equals 0 at these two points because you have zeros on a graph. So these are critical points for f of x. But critical points are not uh, just restricted to this, or they would be no different than zeros themselves. If f prime of x, or uh, another way to think of this is the derivative of x, when that equals 0, that means that uh, your function is changing direction. All right. So why why does this mean that your function is changing direction when f prime of x? Which this doesn't even look like f prime of x. Come on, let's rewrite that. When f prime of x equals zero, why, why does that mean your function is changing direction? All right, so let's have a, oh, a nice little pretend function here, and let's uh, nice. Okay, so we have our function. Everywhere, where do you think f prime of x is going to be 0 on this function? Well, the answer is it's going to be 0 uh, here and here and somewhere around in this general area. This is the best example right here of when it's going to be 0. Because the, uh, if you remember, of course, the derivative of a function is the slope of the tangent line to a certain point on that function. So the slope of a tangent line, in fact, let's just go ahead and make a new slide here so that we can talk about this more in depth. The slope of a tangent line to, and we'll try to recreate this function sort of. All right, so the slope of a tangent line, let's say, how about, how about here? Well, let's draw a tangent line. Let's get another color here. Let's draw a tangent line. Uh, blue, okay, so here's a tangent line to this function. This has definite slope, okay? So this is, this is a bad idea. This is not going to be equal to zero. But what about if, the, uh, if we go and look at a point like right, let's say right here? Is it going to be zero there? Let's draw a tangent line and see. Well, yeah, I mean, what's the slope of that? There is no slope. So m equals zero here. And if m equals zero, that means that the slope of the tangent line is zero, right? So f prime of x, which is just asking what the slope of the tangent line is, f prime is going to be zero. And every time it's zero, your function is going to either, now you could, could have a function and it could look like this, and you could go, mm, okay, I mean, that's a function, it's, it's ugly and it's boring, but it doesn't, you're, you're not changing direction yet, but uh, for the purposes of curve sketching, because you know, the direction is staying the same here, for the purposes of curve sketching, uh, the uh, critical values for f prime of x are going to be uh, when your function is changing direction. And uh, these are your critical points, of course. Okay, now let's uh, look at f double prime of x, which this is also important here. We're not going to go past f double prime for the purposes of this, but f double prime of x, when this equals 0, this means that you have what is called an inflection point. And what an inflection point is, it's when your function is changing concavity. So, let's see, I think concavity is what we said we needed to talk about next. Yeah, it is. So let's go ahead and talk about concavity. And while we talk about it, we will talk about inflection points. So, here we go. Here is a function. Draw our function here. Uh, all right. We'll use pink. Okay. So... Okay, this part of the function is not a function. Let me erase this and, and fix that. Okay, great. So, uh, we know basically what we're looking at here. All right, so let's evaluate some pieces of this here. 
Concavity simply refers to if a function looks like a frown or a smiley face is the easiest way to think about it. So this right here is going to be concave up, and this is going to be concave down, okay? So what is this part of the function right here? Is this going to be concave up or concave down? Well, it's going to be concave up because it looks most like this. So this portion is concave up. Let's go ahead and label everything. This is going to, this portion is, uh, this is concave up, this is concave down, this is concave down. Uh, this is concave up, concave down, concave up, concave down. Okay, so this function has a, an enormous variety. So when we look at concavity, uh, we're talking about the second derivative. And when we're talking about increasing or decreasing, we're talking about the first derivative. I'll make a little chart uh, on, a, on another slide that will that will better illustrate that. But, all right, so we have some points here where the function is changing direction, like we talked about earlier. We have some horizontal tangent lines. In fact, we have, we have quite a few of them. Uh, and so those aren't important to us here. Just needed to point that out uh, for memory's sake. And we have some points where the function is changing in concavity, so we have some inflection points. All right, so where is the function changing concavity? Well, it's, it's changing concavity right here. It's changing concavity here. It's changing concavity uh, here. So we can see it doesn't always have to be changing direction when it changes concavity. This is still increasing, right? This part of the function is concave up. This portion is concave down. But from here to here, are we ever decreasing? No, of course we aren't. We're just going up, up, up like that. So we're increasing the entire time, uh, yet our concavity changes. So we have an inflection point right here. So, all right, let's see what else we need to talk about. We've talked about inflection points now and concavity. Uh, horizontal and, and vertical asymptotes. Okay, horizontal asymptote, this is pretty simple. This is anything like this. Here's the function. The function is bounded by that asymptote. You can't, it's like the MC Hammer song, can't touch this. An asymptote just means anything that you can't touch. Your function can get infinitely close to it, but it can never, ever, ever touch it. So this is a uh, horizontal asymptote. I should actually, actually, let's just write this out. Uh, so a horizontal asymptote here, great. And now let's look at an example of a vertical asymptote. So uh, we have some here, like uh, tangent x is a brilliant example of, uh, of vertical asymptotes because everywhere that, like in a rational function, if you're evaluating a rational function, anywhere that the uh, denominator, uh, we, we can have whatever we want up here, anywhere the denominator is zero, that means that the function is going to be undefined at that point, and that's going to cause this <clears throat> vertical asymptote to take place. So you can see function looks a little bit like tangent there, right? So tan x, uh, we'll, just, we'll just pretend and call it that. All right, um, for this. And uh, so this is what a uh, horizontal, not a horizontal, ugh, a vertical asymptote is. And of course, arc tan x. This is this would be a good example of that. Not not this function per se, but having something bounded by horizontal asymptotes is a good example of arc tan x. So, all righty. Now let's talk about intervals of increase and decrease. Well, we we sort of already did a little bit, um, but now is a good time to draw that chart. I think. Ah, uh, all right. So intervals of increase and decrease. So this is really just talking about the first derivative of a function. So if your function is increasing, if your function is increasing, you're going to have a uh, positive uh, first derivative at, at the point at which it is increasing. You're going to have a, uh, a derivative of z first derivative of 0. Remember, if your uh, function is changing direction, and you're going to have a first derivative that's negative if your function is decreasing. And uh, this is the same with our, uh, our concavity in the second derivative. So let's, let's look here. Let's say we have a function, and 
Uh, let's let's make this little chart here. Actually, let's make it look semi decent. Uh, let's make this little chart, and we have uh, got some lines on the end, and. Let's put over here on the left, let's just put f prime of x. And, and what we mean by f prime of x is we're just going to have the equation itself, the, the derivative of the uh, function you were initially evaluating, the function you're trying to curve. You're going to put that there, and then you're going to plug in points along the way. Like, oh, let's say we have 0, and we have, a, let's say that uh, a couple of our x-intercepts were, you know, uh, not negative on that side. We're, we're positive 1 and negative 3. So you're going to go in and you're going to plug in some values, uh, these values themselves and values near them. And let's, let's draw a line. So let's say we would plug in that test values in between here, so like negative 1. And we plug in a test value in between here, like 1 half. And we plug in a test value over here, like 3. And we plug in a test value here, like negative 6. Uh, and uh, then we're going to have f double prime right over here. And now it comes a really, really, really cool part. All right, so we plug in this value, and yeah, let's get another, another line here. Okay, so we plug in, no, we don't need that. We plug in this value for negative 6, and okay, it's positive. And then we do it for negative 1, and it's positive. And then we get another negative, and then this is positive. And so you, you see the pattern of what we're doing here. All right, now let's do this for f double prime. We plug it in the same values here, and we get that this is negative, this is positive, this is positive, this is, uh, this is a negative. Uh, and let's, for illustration purposes, let's change this to negative over here, too, so we have a, a two negatives with each other. All right, now... What this means is, and let's give ourselves some room here, because I know that watermark's in the right-hand corner. Let's give ourselves some room and say, hmm, what do we do? What can we tell about our function immediately over these, these little specified intervals? Uh, by, just by looking at this neat little chart that wasn't that hard to arrive at. Okay, so this is positive, negative. So, hmm, the first derivative talks about intervals of increase and decrease, and the second derivative talks about concavity. So, if this is positive, we know that this is increasing, and it's concave, what? Down, because that's negative. All right, so we have this part here. Let's do it again. This is increasing, and it's concave up. This is decreasing, concave up. This is decreasing concave down. Does that make sense? It should. Uh, and if it doesn't, just go back and, and, and look at what we talked about with concavity on the graph. All right. Decreasing concave down, yada, yada, yada. So this is great. I mean, we have a huge amount of information now just from this tiny little chart. So what can we do with that? Well, look at this little chart here. Let's draw another one. Let's draw a little box. And let's write up top. We say, eh, let's make that all the way. It's right up top here. This on the top is uh, the concave up. This is concave down. And then this is increasing. And this is decreasing. So you just go and look back here and say, hmm, okay. Uh, positive, negative. So this is increasing concave down increasing, concave down, so we would go to what's in this box. So what are in these boxes? Well, this is really cool. So this is how you p figure out the picture of the graph to draw in between these intervals is just by doing that chart and then looking at this. So we have concave up, it's increasing. Well, that's going to look like this, okay? Then we have concave down that's also increasing. It's going to look about like that. Uh, and then we have something that is concave up, but it's decreasing. So that's... Not, uh, it's a little trickier. And then we have something that's concave down and decreasing, which looks pretty familiar. So we have this, and then we just go and we take this and we say, okay, uh, this is decreasing concave up. So, hmm, decreasing concave up. Ah, we need this one right here. So that's all you have to do uh, when you go into sketch your function. So I believe we have talked about everything. We've talked about zeros, y-intercepts, critical values, horizontal and vertical asymptotes. We've talked about, uh, we, we've talked about points existing, not always, but uh, sometimes not existing. You may or may not have a y-intercept. We've talked about, we've talked about uh, why functions always have to be one-to-one -one and must pass the vertical line test. So that's why you can't have more than one y-intercept. We have spoken about concavity, uh, concavity. We've spoken about inflection points and intervals of increase and decrease. So we are done. All right.
Uh, that should be all. Look for more videos uh, that I've put up about curve sketching. If you have any other uh, concerns, just leave a comment.